This one's gonna be a bit interesting, mainly because there's no general consensus as to why it's so prevalent. Why is green the color of choice for so many printed circuit boards? Let's find out. If you're sick of seeing that same activate Windows watermark over and over, snag an OEM license from SCD Key. You'll have a fully activated OS in seconds and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use menu offer code GSL for that sweet discount. First, we need to modify the question asked previously. Why are PCBs green? This is actually an inaccurate inference. It's the resin atop the PCB that's typically dyed green. The PCB itself is often comprised of several ultra thin copper layers in computer applications. And since copper will oxidize over time with help from water vapor in the atmosphere, a protective sealant, so to speak, is needed to prevent the degradation of traces and signals over time. It's also used strategically in wave soldering applications to isolate certain areas of the board for soldering. It's an efficient process. Now this sealant is called solder mask and consists of similar non-conductive plastics and resins typically dyed again green. So back to the original question then, why green? Well, there are many reasons offered on the World Wide Web. As I'm sure you can imagine, there is really no clear consensus here, but perhaps the most consistent one I've found has to do with psychology and the easiness of green on the human eye. Colors like bright yellow can act as stimulants and in induce anxiety, while colors like blue and violet can, can be physically difficult at all to perceive. So we choose green because it's easier to stare at. That's basically what this theory boils down to. Electricians and engineers who stare at PCBs 24 seven would appreciate colors that didn't evoke an unwarranted emotion. We talked a bit about this in our Why Were PCs Beige video, which you can check out up here. But I think there's a lot more to it than just the psychology of it. I mean, sure, green is a generally pleasing color. Maybe it doesn't play well with PC aesthetics in 2020, but it gets the job done. Uh, but there are other colors from a, a psychological standpoint, at least, that are just as viable, if that's your only argument. So for instance, a lighter shade of yellow or, or blue, like a baby yellow or a baby blue. But the problem with these colors is that they don't always contrast nicely with the tracks, which are the small copper paths connecting two or more points on a board. You can often see these clear as day on basic circuits, and depending on the layering, you could have more than one track in the same unit area. Bare copper is already a goldish orange color and would contrast pretty terribly with a yellow resin. Same goes for light blue. It just doesn't look right. Now colors that do happen to, actually I just remember this is green so it's gonna not look great on my green screen. Colors that do contrast great with copper are green and red, which is probably why these are the most prevalent. Uh, the green is even more so, which ties back into our previous point regarding color intensity and emotion. Red is a much more aggressive color, especially when it's surrounding you right, if you're inside of a, a large system, let's say. And I, I mentioned contrast more than once because we still have uh, and use humans to QC boards in production. Tracks need to be apparent. You need to be able to see if those tracks have been degraded before they are being sold on shelves, right? And elements cannot blend in uh, with that surrounding mask, so you need to be able to see those clear, distinct issues if they exist. Now, there's also another word I mentioned that likely caught your ear, maybe something you haven't heard of before, I hadn't before I researched for this video, silk screen. That is that thin layer of ink traces used to identify board components like pins and resistors. This text typically is white and obviously needs to be legible, making green, yet again, a great fit. Yellow and red, eh, not so much. It also helps that green is a natural color for many glass epoxies and resins to begin with, meaning extra pigmentation may not even be necessary, which means costs stay down. And to that end, there are some pigments that distribute terribly in certain applications. White pigments used to make white PCBs like this one are prone to more coating errors and tolerance issues than conventional green or red ones, and thus cost more to produce, which explains why we don't see too many of them, although they do look mighty fine. They're also horrible, by the way, at contrasting tracks and silk screens, which makes them difficult to debug and troubleshoot. Now, a final reason for green solder mask may have something to do with the US Army, which has traditionally used green for camouflage, right? This is no secret. They use green for their trucks, helicopters, uniforms, and even their guns. Uh, so it may, it, it may make sense, right, for them to have uh, early 
printed circuit boards that were green as well. Uh, that and any potentially exposed bright red or bright yellow PCB in the battlefield would have stood out for miles in a sea of green, making things a bit easier for your enemies. But the military conducted a plethora of tests in the 50s related to PCB fabrication and even received a patent for their design. So they were heavily invested in this stuff. And through nearly every scenario imaginable, apparently, green pigment held up the best in their testing. So in that way, it was more of a coincidence that it happened to be the same color as US Army camo, or at least, you know, a derivation of that color. There's this more foresty green, this is more of a neutral green. Anyway, I know this theory is a bit weird and kind of multi-layered, but either way, I hope you've at least learned a thing or two about why we use green pigment and solder masks and why it's a necessity for copper-derived PCBs. If you guys enjoyed this one, and give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one. My name's Greg, thanks for learning with me.